Hello Booktube, this is Weekly Reads. Um, I've had a very productive uh, reading week, although most of the books have been slim volumes of poetry, so yeah, but I've enjoyed them immensely, so anyway, but the first book I read over the course of this uh, reading week um, was The Life and Death of Ancient Cities by Greg Wolf. Um, this is about ancient cities. To be more specific, uh, ancient cities in the Iron Age. To be more specific still, ancient cities in the Iron Age along the northern Mediterranean coast. But to be more specific still, the cities founded by Greece and Rome during the Iron Age. Although a few other civilizations their cities get some attention as well. The Etruscans or Racina, um, the Phoenicians or the Tyrians and other um, city-states in that region that we call Phoenicia. Um, now, when I first had a go at this book last year for uh, Nonfiction November, the fact that the focus was essentially on the ancient cities of Greece and Rome put me off the book. Um, but I wasn't satisfied with that. So I wanted to come back to it to have another go at it. And I did this past week. And I thoroughly regret it. Um, so while well, I still want a big global history of the ancient city, or really a history of the city, period. And while, yes, the history of the Iron Age, the Iron Age in the Northern Mediterranean, or isn't basically just a big history of Greece and Rome, are all fascinating, the problem is, is the Life and Death of Ancient Cities is not a very good book. It's just, it's not well written. It's repetitive. It's editor and copy editor should have been fired because I found so many mistakes in them. Like, so, yeah. But anyway, so I was very thoroughly disappointed with this uh, reread. Um, although I am happy to have had a second go at it and I'm done. So I don't know if um, I'll keep it just for research purposes or because, I mean, there are certain things you can use this book for. Um, it might not necessarily be very good, but... Obviously, if you're creating an empire, um, there are certain ideas about a tributary empire that uses cities as its sort of fundamental unit of extraction. That would be incredibly fascinating. And also um, how the cities operated and stuff. So I think along those lines, uh, The Life and Death of Ancient Cities is actually rather useful. It's just... As a reading experience, it stank, um, unfortunately. So with that in mind, I decided to, I have to go and take out the bookmark, because I need to take out the bookmark, use it for something else. I'm not going to continue on with um, Empires of Vice by Dan S. Kim. Um, I originally planned to read this after the Life and Death of Ancient Cities. Um, I bailed on this earlier this year uh, when I read it for the History Reading Challenge. Um, but, and while I did like what I read of it, it just, it's a tough slog. And I'm not in the mood right now. Uh, I need a bit of a break from history right now. So, we might come to this when I do a Bell Redemption uh, February or something. I might come back to it or I might not. I don't know. We shall see. So, falling a bit down, um, I decided to revisit some uh, volumes of poetry I have in my perpetually 
paltry poetry collection, but I intend to try to make less paltry, although that will take a lot of work. So I started with um, The Dream of the Unified Field by Jory Graham. Uh, this is her um, selected poetry between 1974 and 1994, uh, for which she won the Pulitzer Prize. And I love this collection. It is wonderful. Although I did read this earlier this year and I didn't quite get on with it as well as I did this time. For which I really have no explanation for, but uh, except for maybe questioning my reading sanity at times. Uh, but I loved it. it. I mean, I usually love it when I read this collection. Uh, there are a lot of poems in here I like, and I do want a lot more jo of Jory Graham's work, which I need to get on. Um, I also read The New Black by Evie Shockley. Uh, this is a relatively new uh, addition to my collection, um, and I read it earlier this year as well, and this rereading, I just, uh, this collection has skyrocketed in my estimation. I don't think there was a point in here that I didn't like. And when I read the, this collection earlier this year, I mentioned there are some of, the, some of the poems that are more experimental in form. Like there's a poem that makes an X and one that makes a circle and one that is just spread all over two pages that I initially didn't quite like, but read the rereading these poems again, I pretty much love every poem in this collection. Just fantastic. And again, I would love to have more uh, poetry collections by Evie Shockley. And today I uh, reread um, the slimmest volume of poetry from this round, um, and that is uh, Troy Unincorporated by Francesca Abate, or Abbott. Um, so, this collection is a linked uh, story that draws on um, the uh, Troilus and Cressida by um, Geoffrey Chaucer it, that moves the action from uh, ancient Troy to a relatively more contemporary Troy in um, the unincorporated Troy, Wisconsin. Although there are a number of Troys in Wisconsin, so I'm not entirely sure which Troy is intended. But anyway, um, so I liked the collection for the most part. I mean, there are some points that I thought maybe didn't quite work. I think sometimes the um, narrative voice is maybe a bit too much the same, and perhaps the a poetic voice for some of the characters is a bit more elevated, educated, um, than perhaps maybe the characters really warrant. But anyway, but I did quite enjoy this reread, and I'll probably have another reread of it at some point. I mean, I can read uh, slim volumes of poetry uh, relatively quickly. Uh, so, particularly when they're rereads, um, it only took me maybe less than an hour to read Troyan Incorporated, um, and that was with a uh, doctor's appointment. Uh, Sprinkle did not for me. Um, that was earlier this week, um, but for my mom, she had a uh, follow-up from her recent hospital stay. Um, everything's looking good, so yeah. Anyway, so what will I be reading this coming? week. Um, I need some fiction. I need some fantasy. So I'm going to go with some fantasy that I've been meaning to get to this year. So I'm going to start tomorrow with um, The Black Coast, uh, book one of the God King Chronicles by Mike Brooks. Um, and since it has been so long since I've um, added this to my collection, I think it came out in February, I'll read the um, thing from the back, which I very rarely do. I wonder if I should, particularly in my book hauls, because I think that might 
maybe enrich the book wholesome, or at least make them longer. <laughs> okay, so... When the citizens of Black Keep see ships on the horizon, terror takes them, because they know who is coming. For generations, the Keep has been raided by the fearsome clanspeople of Chakorsha. Settling their war dragons, Black Keep's warriors rush to defend their home, only to discover that the clanspeople have not come to pillage at all. Driven from their own land by a demonic despot who prophesizes the end of the world, the raiders come in search of a new home. Meanwhile, the wider continent of Narita is lurching toward war. Black Keep is about to be caught in the crossfire, if only its new mismatched society can survive. Sounds incredibly fascinating. Quite looking forward to getting to this. And I will also be reading once I finish um, uh, The Black Coast, I will be reading The Conductors by Nicole Glover. Uh, which I came out, I think, around maybe a few months after uh, The Black Coast. Anyway, so from the um, back. Hetty Rose and her husband Benji were conductors on the Underground Railroad, ferrying dozens of slaves to freedom with daring, cunning, and magic that draws its power from the constellations. With the war over, those skills find a new purpose as Hetty and Benji solve mysteries and murders that white authorities would otherwise ignore. In the heart of Philadelphia's Seventh Ward, everyone knows that when there's a strange death or magical curses are causing, are causing trouble, Hetty and Benji are the only ones who can solve the case. But when an old friend is murdered, their investigation stirs up a wasp's nest of intrigue, lies, and long buried secrets and a mystery unlike anything they've handled before. With the clever, cold-blooded killer on the prowl, Hetty and Benji, testing their magic and placing their lives at risk, will discover how little they really know about their neighbors and themselves. Again, sounds incredibly fascinating, and I am really looking forward to getting to this one too. And hopefully I will have a lot better luck with... Um, these two than I have with some of the fiction I have been reading this past year and more since it's going on two years since the whole uh, science fiction and well the fiction sort of you're not getting on with fiction and even science fiction fantasy but hopefully I will break it now um, so anyway so that's my plan um, what else is there I want to talk about? So, I've been me meaning to talk a bit about uh, Cowboy Bebop, um, the live-action Netflix adaptation of the seminal um, anime that came out in the late 90s. So, Cowboy Bebop is the story of Spike Spiegel, who is a former member of a syndicate, a uh, organized criminal organization in a far future uh, solar system that has terraformed assuming of course it's not an alternate uh, reality in which the planets were more or less habitable uh, from the get-go and didn't need much in the way of terraforming because um, I think that would explain Venus and Cowboy Bebop but anyway um, so Spike Spiegel has become a bounty hunter after surviving a hit from his uh, former colleagues in his in the syndicate he works for, uh, partnering with um, Jet Black, a former cop who has uh, been drummed out of the force. And they go collecting bounties and usually not doing too well. Uh, they encounter a con woman named Faye Valentine who joins the crew looking for um, he's, uh, for her past. She's a, an amnesiac. And they're also eventually joined by um, a computer hacker named, or computer genius named um, Radical Edward. And so they kind of go collect bounties and have adventures until um, Spike's past catches up with him um, on several occasions. Uh, the live action adaptation adapts much of this um, it 
basically I mean, the same idea. A lot of the stories are adapted, um, although condensed, and uh, quite a few things have changed. Um, I loved it for the most part. I really enjoyed watching all the episodes. Um, I thought the acting was really good, um, although I kind of quibble a bit with uh, John Cho's interpretation of Spike. Um, I wish they'd done a, something a bit different with Vicious. Um, but, I mean, I also love the aesthetics. Um, the look of it just, it was really brilliant. Um, I especially liked, um, Mustafa Shakir as Jet Black. That was amazing. Um, a wonderful performance. And also Daniela Pineda as Faye. Um, the writing might have been a bit hokey, I think, at times. Uh, the writing could have been better. And unfortunately, it only has one season. Uh, Netflix counseled it earlier this month, which is a shame. I had hoped there would have been a few more seasons, maybe another one. Um, or I think maybe to a certain extent, like the idea that you don't really need multiple seasons to tell a story. Just go in, have a... How would you adapt Cowboy Bebop, which is, I think, a 24-episode anime series, to one 10-episode season? Or if you need to, maybe add a, little, a few more episodes to kind of tell the whole story. I think maybe would have been better than what it eventually happened, which is a dangling, uh, bittersweet ending that has so many second season hooks that it's yeah um i've also been watching marseille which is a, a french netflix series i think perhaps maybe one of the first um international netflix originals it's about um corruption and political corruption in the city of marseille as the mayor um his protege uh, betrays him and in revenge, the mayor decides to run for another term, and it gets ugly and soapy. And while I initially quite liked the series, the soapy elements started to really wear me down. And when I watched the seventh episode, because um, I have one episode left of the first season and then the rest of the second season, um, the handling of one, of one character's death really annoyed me. Uh, I thought... That character should have had a bit more, like, more should have been done with his death. And I think, ultimately, his death probably should have had a larger political impact than maybe it did. It did. I don't know. I obviously haven't seen the uh, season finale of season one. So, anyway. Um... So I'm not entirely sure what I'll be watching on Netflix coming up. I'm thinking either Lost in Space or Altered Carbon, which is a series that I've been wanting to read, certainly in um, book form. It's an adaptation of a series of novels by um, Richard K. Morgan, who's um, a Land Fit for Heroes series is one that I kind of like. I particularly like Still Remains. So anyway. Um, is there anything else? Um, oh yeah. kind of wanted to mention um, Steve Donahue's um, Years in Best li or his Years lists, uh, which have been coming out on his um, uh, personal website, not open letters review which had been the last few years where the best and worst list appeared this year it's exclusively on his website and i've been following along and for the most part i'm kind of it's entertaining i quite uh i particularly like the uh, debut fiction that's always an interesting one um and the science fiction and fantasy which is my personal favorite fiction genre and also the history, which a lot of the history on that I haven't even heard of. Um, and biography, too. 
I'm probably perhaps regretting having pre-ordered uh, The Queen by Matthew Dennison when a different book, uh, The Last Queen, and I'm forgetting on who wrote it, uh, is uh, got the best list. Um, so yeah, so if you haven't had a chance to check out uh, Steve's best list, uh, check out his website. It's on all of his videos. Um, so anyway, I think that's all I've got for now. Um, so next week I'll probably do some uh, tag videos. I saw earlier, um, I haven't watched it yet, there's a new uh, food themed uh, tag from Literary Gladiators, which I'm super excited for. I love those tags. Um, I think there's a few other really good tags that have been coming out the last few weeks that I've been missing, so I'll try to track those down. And yeah, and then of course I'll do weekly reads on Friday, even though it is Christmas Eve, I'll go ahead and do weekly reads because why not? Um, and then the following week, I'll uh, obviously do um, my book haul, which will include not only the books I've um, collected myself, which is which are over here, but also the two books I know for sure I got for Christmas, which I ordered. <laughs> They'll also be included over here too. And I'll make a mention of them. And also the last haul or the last four books I have out for December, which are going to be poetry. Um, I ordered them like this past weekend and they haven't gotten in yet or I'm not entirely sure what the tracking on them are is. I'll have to look that up later. But anyway, booktube, I'm starting to ramble. So I'm going to head and uh, call it an evening. Well, I'm going to go upload this and watch some YouTube. Um, but anyway, booktube, I will see you all next week. Um, so until then, thank you. Have a great evening and weekend and stay safe. Thank you.